Hi guys! Welcome back to this YouTube channel. So for today's video, we are going to discuss about the homeroom guidance of Grade 11, Quarter 3, Module 7, entitled Responsibility and Respect to Break the Silence. At the end of this module, you are expected to, number one, describe situations where human rights are promoted or violated. Number two, relate to oneself in the practice of laws that protect human rights. And number three, create a slogan as an advocacy on human rights. This module raises awareness to all of you who are soon to take part on greater roles in the country. More than the expertise and knowledge, it is fitting the desire that you understand the accountabilities and be acquainted with human rights not only to contribute meaningfully to the nation, but also to be catalyst of peace and order. Let's come now to our first activity, entitled Agree or Disagree. Directions Share your opinion on the following statements. Write in a clean sheet of paper, and please do not forget to write your name, grade and section, and the title of the activity. A. Human rights give people the authority to speak and do whatever they want. B. It is the sole responsibility of the government to educate the people about its responsibility and rights. C. Bills or memorandums are intended to keep people safe. Activity 1, entitled Batas Mo, I Describe Mo. Directions. In a clean sheet of paper, give at least three situations that members of the community violated laws in the Philippines and if you are to decide what corresponding actions can correct such violations. So, in the left table, you are going to put the sample situation or scenario, and in the right table, you are going to put the actions to correct the violation. After doing Activity 1, answer the following questions and write it in a clean sheet of paper. Number 1. What did you realize after the activity? Number 2. Why is it important to follow these laws? And number three, how can you promote mutual respect of rights and protections of human rights in your daily life? Let's come now proceed to our activity two, entitled, Hashtag, Respect is a Must. Think of someone whom you have offended or have shown disrespect and do the following. Number one, in two minutes, Think and reflect. Write a letter or text to that someone whom you think you disrespected. If that someone is a family member, approach and talk to that person. Number two, express yourself by sharing your feelings and thoughts. This is one way to clarify and give everybody chance to explain themselves and apologize when needed. After doing activity two, answer the following questions and write it in a clean sheet of paper. Number one, what are your thoughts during the activity? Number two, how does the activity help you improve your relationships, especially in this crisis that we are experiencing right now? Article three, Bill of Rights of 1987, Philippine Constitution. Section one, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall any person be denied the equal protection of the laws. Section 2. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures of whatever nature and for any purpose shall be inviolable and no such warrant or warrant of arrest shall issue except upon probable cause to be determined personally by the judge after examination under oath or affirmation of the complainant and the witnesses he may produce, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the person or things to be seized. Section 3. The privacy of communication and correspondence shall be inviolable except upon lawful order of the court, or when public safety or order requires otherwise, as prescribed by law. And evidence obtained in violation of this, 
or the preceding section shall be inadmissible for any purpose in any proceeding. Section 4. No law shall be passed abridging the freedom of speech, of expression, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and petition the government for redress of grievances. Section 5. No law shall be made respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. The free exercise and enjoyment of religious profession and worship, without discrimination or preference, shall forever be allowed. No religious test shall be required for the exercise of civil or political rights. Section 6. The liberty of abode and of changing the same within the limits prescribed by law shall not be impaired except upon lawful order of the court. Neither shall the right to travel be impaired except in the interest of national security, public safety, or public health, as may be provided by law. Section 7. The right of the people to information on matters of public concern shall be recognized. Access to official records and to documents and papers pertaining to official acts, transactions, or decisions as well as to government research data used as basis for policy development shall be afforded the citizen, subject to such limitations as may be provided by law. Section 8. The right of the people, including those employed in the public and private sectors, to form unions, associations, or societies for purposes that contrary to law shall not be abridged. Section 9. Private property shall not be taken for public use without just compensation. Section 10. No law impairing the obligation of contracts shall be passed. Section 11. Free access to the courts and quasi-judicial bodies and adequate legal assistance shall not be denied to any person by reason of poverty. Section 12. Any person under investigation for the commission of an offense shall have the right to be informed of his right to remain silent and to have competent and independent counsel, preferably of his own choice. If the person cannot afford the services of counsel, he must be provided with one. These rights cannot be waived except in writing and in the presence of counsel. No torture force, violence, threat, intimidation, or any other means which vitiate the free will shall be used against him. Secret detention places, solitary, incommunicado, or other similar forms of detention are prohibited. Any confession or admission obtained in violation of this or Section 17 hereof shall be inadmissible in evidence against him. The law shall provide for penal and civil sanction for violations of this section as well as compensation to the rehabilitation of victims of torture or similar practices and their families. Section 13. All persons except those charged with offenses punishable by reclusion perpetua when evidence of guilt is strong shall, before conviction, be bailable by sufficient sureties or be released on recognizance as may be provided by law. The right to bail shall not be impaired even when the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus is suspended. Excessive bail shall not be required. Section 14. No person shall be held to answer for a criminal offense without due process of law. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall be presumed innocent until the contrary is proved and shall enjoy the right to be heard by himself and counsel, to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusations against him, to have a speedy, impartial, and public trial, to meet the witnesses face to face, and to have compulsory process to secure the attendance of witnesses and the production of evidence in his behalf. However, after arraignment, trial may proceed notwithstanding the absence of the accused provided that he has been duly notified 
any failure to appear is unjustifiable. Section 15. The privilege of the writ of habeas corpus shall not be suspended except in cases of invasion or rebellion when the public safety requires it. Section 16. All persons shall have the right to a speedy disposition of their cases before all judicial, quasi-judicial, or administrative bodies. Section 17. No person shall be compelled to be a witness against himself. Section 18. No person shall be detained solely by reason of his political beliefs and aspirations. No involuntary servitude in any form shall exist except as a punishment for a crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted. Section 19. Excessive fines shall not be imposed nor cruel, degrading, or inhuman punishment inflicted. Neither shall death penalty be imposed unless for compelling reasons involving heinous crimes the Congress hereafter provides for it. Any death penalty already imposed shall be reduced to reclusion perpetua. The employment of physical, psychological, or degrading punishment against any prisoner or detainee or the use of substandard or inadequate penal facilities under subhuman conditions shall be dealt with by law. Section 20. No person shall be imprisoned for debt or non-payment of a poll tax. Section 21. No person shall be twice put in jeopardy of punishment for the same offense. If an act is punished by a law or an ordinance, Conviction or acquittal under either shall constitute a bar to another prosecution for the same act. Section 22. No ex post facto law or bill of attainder shall be enacted. Terms to remember. Due process means that a person should not be deprived of life, liberty, or property without legal reason and only in accordance with legal procedure charged when a formal but unproven allegation has been made against you arrest when a person is taken into custody and charged with committing a crime detention when a person is taken into custody without necessarily being charged convicted when you have been proven guilty of a charge acquitted when you have been proven innocent of a charge Miranda Rights, Section 12, Article 3 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution that states a person right to remain silent, to legal counsel, and to not be tortured, threatened, or intimidated, or secretly detained without communication or in solitary confinement. Principles of Human Rights In understanding the meaning of human rights, one must first recognize the salient features that define it. Human rights are universal, which means every person enjoys the same rights as any other person regardless of race, religion, and other differentiating and defining factors. So, a baby that is born in the Philippines has the same right to life, education, and others as would be enjoyed by someone of Western descent. Inalienable, which simply means it can never be taken away by anything or anyone. Indivisible, which means that the rights possessed by each person are of equal importance. For example, a person should not be denied the right to education simply because he is enjoying his right to adequate living conditions. Interdependent and interrelated meaning one right contributes to the full enjoyment of the others. For example, one cannot fully enjoy his right to education and study, while being deprived of proper nutrition and care, hence these two rights are involved with each other. Equal, as human beings of dignity and should not suffer from any forms of discrimination. Sixth, all persons have the right to participation and inclusion 
which means they have the right to join in on matters that would affect their life and well-being. Accountable and follow the rule of law in protecting and observing the rights of its constituents. Anti-Bullying Act of 2013 Republic Act 10627 Acts of Bullying Bullying shall refer to any severe or repeated use by one or more students of a written, verbal, or electronic expression, or a physical act or gesture, or any combination thereof, directed at another student that has the effect of actually causing or placing the latter in reasonable fear of physical or emotional harm or damage to his property, creating a hostile environment at school for the other student, infringing on the rights of the other student at school, or materially and substantially disrupting the education process or the orderly operation of a school. Child Protection Policy, DepEd Number 40 Series of 2012. The policy aims to protect the child from all forms of violence that may be inflicted by adults, persons in authority, as well as their fellow students, including bullying. In addition, it will also provide special protection to children who are gravely threatened or endangered by circumstances which affect their normal development and over which they have no control and to assist the concerned agencies in their rehabilitation. Moreover, it will ensure that such special protection from all forms of abuse and exploitation and care as is necessary for the child's well-being, considering the primary rights and duties of parents, legal guardians, or other individuals who are legally responsible and exercise custody over the child. And it aims to zero tolerance for any act of child abuse, exploitation, violence, discrimination, bullying, and any other forms of abuse. Violence Against Women and Their Children, Republic Act 9262. Violence against women and their children refers to any act or a series of acts committed by any person against a woman who is his wife, former wife, or against a woman with whom the person has or had a sexual or dating relationship or with whom he has a common child, or against your child whether legitimate or illegitimate, within or without the family abode, which result in or is likely to result in physical, sexual, psychological harm or suffering, or economic abuse including threats of such acts, battery, assault, coercion, harassment, or arbitrary deprivation of liberty. It includes, but it is not limited to the following acts. Anti-Sexual Harassment Act, Republic Act 7877. Work, education, or training related sexual harassment. Is work, education, or training related sexual harassment is committed by any employer, employee, manager, supervisor, agent of the employer, teacher, instructor, professor, coach, trainer, or any other person who having authority, influence, or moral ascendancy over another in a work or training or education environment, demands, requests, or otherwise requires any sexual favor from the other regardless of whether the demand, request, or requirement for submission is accepted by the object of said act. Cybercrime Law, Republic Act 10175. Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012 is a law in the Philippines that aims to address legal issues concerning online interactions and the internet in the country. Among the cybercrime offenses included in the bill are cyber squatting, cyber sex, child pornography, identity theft, interception, illegal access to data and libel. In a clean sheet of paper, try to answer the following questions. Number one, how do you feel while reading and understanding the laws? Number two, what is the importance of the laws 
presented to the current situations that we have now. Number three, what can you do in promoting the awareness of the loss to your fellow youth? Human Rights Advocacy Challenge. So this activity, you are going to make a slogan that promotes advocacy about human rights. Write an explanation regarding your advocacy and do this in a one-fourth cartolina or a clean sheet of paper. You may recycle by using the back part of the calendar or you may also use Manila paper. Let's test what you have learned in our discussion. And now, it's time for you to take part in this community. Make a pledge as a citizen of the country to show your respect and to take full responsibility of your undertakings. Please copy the format below in a clean sheet of paper and indicate your name, grade and section, and the name of the activity. So you are going to make an oath of respect and responsibility. I, oath to blank and be a responsible individual by blank and you will going to sign and signature over printed name and put the date. It's time to share your thoughts and feelings. Directions, copy the 3 to 1 table below in your homeroom guidance and fill it out. So the first column, you are going to put the three most important things you learned about this lesson. The second column, the two reasons why you feel that this lesson is important. And the last one is the one thing you still want to explore about this topic. 